Alright, so hello and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. Um, last time I... last attempt I did at this I messed up by just one left enough that I needed to do pretty much right at the very end. So first, I equip lock with these running shoes, which should be slightly helpful. And... I'll be putting locking down in the back row because there's no reason for either of them to be in the front. Usually there's no reason for anyone to be in the front in vanilla, so... Yep, I know, it sucked. I committed suicide in the middle of it, or at least tried to anyway. It's probably not a good thing for you to show on stage. This part's kind of lenient, as long as I don't do anything really horrible. Like, when I did not my test run, on my best run, I had like a minute to spare of, what I want, of when I wanted to get there anyway. I wanted to get there at, uh, oops. I wanted to get there with two minutes left. And I had three minutes left, so I... It's not too unforgiving. I get there with about 4 minutes and 15 seconds left if I'm doing it regularly. Without sprint shoes, which I don't have because they're not very useful otherwise and they're kind of expensive. Alright. So I can get a hint of when I start with the music goes, but I don't have to way right. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, I just remember that I have to take my steps in groups of five there. And that allows me to not have to remember as much. Alright, so I made it there just fine. Down the staircase. Despite what I did with the triggering the switch before, this is actually much faster even though it's slightly hard to remember. Alright, now I should have exited that room. I'm, as you can probably tell, I'm actually trying to predict the length of time it'll take me to move somewhere. You know, I could have done a double check there really quickly just by uh, going down there and trying to exit, but I suppose it's too late now. Unfortunately, there's not as many doors as I'd like in the Opera House. There we go. Alright, so... Let's just pause the emulator for a second. Uh, this is one thing that I mentioned before uh, that I'd be doing without the blindfold on, because it would be absolutely ridiculous to get through here with it on. So, I figured while I'm at it, Okay, 2 minutes and 51 seconds left. That's pretty legit. Um, I figured while I'm at it, I might as well just blow through this with save states anyway, because this part's just luck-reliant and requires a lot of resets, and I don't want to do a whole pile of resets for something I can't really control in any way, shape, or form, so I figure why not use save states. So I won't be commentating any of this. It'll just show me what happens as I go through.
Alright, so basically, at this point, anything that happens will be legit. If I die here, I'm not going to reload a state I made during the rat dodging part. I'm going to restart the segment. Oh, and maybe I should actually put the, you know, blindfold on. So yeah, that that's... With the save state, this that part is much better, and as you can see, well, I can't anymore. I'm not sure what time was on the timer when I finished that. It's not even that much shorter with save states than it would be legitimately. It's just, I fail less, so. I could have, if I were to do it legit, I would have done it quite handily with 2 minutes and 50 seconds. I just probably wouldn't have done it. I probably would have failed a million times and had terabytes worth of recording bloopers. <laughs> I would have had to delete them all. So, yeah, I can tell when this battle's gonna start, because I get the awesome music coming up. wonder if you can hear my cats purring through the computer. Probably not. I, in hindsight, you don't hear it over the music that I'm... or the sound effects. Alright, so here comes Ultros. I know Locke's on the left, Gao's on the bottom right, and Cyan's on the top right, and I know what order their turns are going to come up as. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, this battle can end in two turns, without me ever taking a hit, or it can go completely horribly. So, uh, Gao. I can't use science. Ooh, nasty. So I can't use science uh, sword text because he counters those. However, I can use him to heal, so that's what I have to do with him. Also, I can hear what si side of the stage his attacks are on, which is very nice, actually. There we go. There's a gigavolt. Two gigavolts in a row, and he's dead. But if the gigavolts are spread out did it again. Wow. Not that it matters as long as I don't mess up horribly. Level 3 model, that's not gonna hit. I don't even care. There's a Gigabolt. Okay, Gao, just one more. Hang in for one more and I've completed the seg- Oh, rats. I did not- Oh yeah, right. That was why. And I win. <laughs> the power of the Spear and Rage. It was worth the four hours on the belt I spent to get it. Hello, Setzer. And now, strangely enough, for the second time in a single segment, I, I've got to mention that I'm going to be taking an allowance for something. The airship, I'm considering a uh, complete, like, I'm allowed to open my eyes anywhere on it, because A, flying it would be impossible without that. There's, it's just ridiculous because there's no uh, audio cues at all of where I'm going. And the second reason is because while I could fly to a save point every single time I want to equip my characters in the World of Ruin, I think that seems just a little bit like a waste of time. So, uh, I'm just gonna, for the sake of simplicity, there's no, there's no reason to force myself to go to a save point every time I want to do something. So... It doesn't really add any challenge or strategy or problem solving, it's just a waste of time. So, yeah. But I'm pretty sure that this is the only other time that I'll never, that I'll be actually having my eyes open. 
I may be forgetting something, like I mentioned another time, but I probably should be able to do the rest of the game with my eyes closed. Anytime it's not an airship, save points, and the upper rat's already over, so... Yeah, I'm happily just wandering around because for the novelty of having my eyes open and actually being able to do something. So let's just check if I need something from the shop here. And I might as well heal myself with this guy, even though... Wait a minute, I'm... I'm at full HP. Yeah, the Ultros never ended up doing any damage in the end, but all I'd be doing is recovering from the oh-so-dangerous float status. Is there anything I want from here? Yeah, I'll never remember they, where they are anyway. Let's buy a couple anyway. I'm glad he never tentacled block because... Oh, smoke bombs. I don't think it'll be worth the money ever. So yeah, for that pointless detour, let's talk to Setzer. Should I really read the dialogue? I think it's a waste of time. I mean, I'm reading it in my head, obviously, but... Alright, so I'm headed to the point of no return. Can't exactly turn back once I'm on the other continent, short of reloading saves and redoing things. So, fortunately, three of the four bosses in the Magitek facility can be kind of gimmicked out of, really. One can be put to sleep, one is pretty much walled with Reflect, and the other is pretty much walled with Vanish, so I think it's really only the cranes that are all that dangerous. Of course, I don't have the oh-so-handy Angliform Rage, and I do not feel the need to get it, so... The Cranes is probably going to be the hardest fight in the place. And of course, there's the fact that it's a maze. Oh, eyes closed. Okay, now that the blindfold's on, I can do the oh-so-hard thing of saving. Um, so where was my cursor again? Face bomb. I was probably on Relic. Equip, skills, item. There we go. So then, I made it through the Opera House. 